Hi, my name is Margaret Lewis, and I'm a mom. I was born and raised in a small town in upstate New York, and I am now raising my kids in a small town in California. I need to talk to you about something that's happening every single day to families all across our country. Too many people are ending up burned alive, injured, and in burn units. They are getting burns from common household fuels. I need you to know that there is a solution that works every single time and it costs a couple of pennies. I'm going to show you briefly my front porch because this is where it happened to my family. I had been landscaping. We designed this. As you can see, you can see my minivan. These are my neighbors. We gathered right here and where you see a fountain now that's for cool water used to be a ventless fireplace so that here in California we could have a social gathering any day we wanted. We didn't have to worry about spare the air and which days we were allowed to burn. So we went with a ventless fireplace after a lot of research. I bought ventless fireplace fuel and it's not cheap. It cost me $25 a gallon. I was told it was safer when the price had gone up. Unfortunately, that did not include a flame arrestor. I want to make sure this doesn't happen to you. And unfortunately, I've just returned from the World Burn Congress. I have met so many burn survivors where these vapor explosions and flashback fires have burned and injured, maimed, and killed people. I need you to give me two minutes of your time and it is worth it. This is what it looks like. Right here is a flame arrestor that I made when I was trying to understand it. This was a spice jar in my kitchen. All I did is put some screening into it. I started asking people, you know, what else can we do? I met PhDs. They showed me these things. I am part of the ASTM subcommittee on flame arresters. We are trying to get a standard written and it's been hard. Unfortunately, this has been in progress for about seven or eight years. I am now working on legislation with my local congressman. Mike Thompson from California has introduced a bill. It's called the Portable Fuel Container Safety Act. This bill is already in Congress, it was submitted this year. But we are going to continue pushing this effort. We've got a new version getting ready to come out for next year. We know that this is not easy. It's failed multiple times. I need your help to bring this forward. Right now, whether it's something like this that's a vodka in a bar or in your home, people get burned. When it is um, a bioethanol, ventless fireplace fuel, sometimes it has a piece of screening at the top. It also sometimes will have a plastic insert. There are also ones that are patent pending. This one happens to be a patent pending one. Here's the things I want you to know. A flame arrestor works every single time. Here's what I mean. There's not one documented case when we have one of these flame arresters present, again, cost a couple pennies, where one of these burn injuries happens. But without it, I will show you some other um, videos that I want you to look at closely. Without it, it's a game of Russian roulette. The bottle will explode a uh, flamethrower of burning fuel. When you cover a human being in that fuel, their body burns, their skin becomes fuel. We are burning them alive. Yeah, gruesome. Happened to my family. I ran outside here after I heard my daughters screaming. I didn't know making s'mores could be a life and death experience. It was innocent. They were celebrating the end of their high school sophomore year and the start of their junior summer. Unfortunately, it was a helicopter ride, eight weeks in a burn unit, attached every day. It's gruesome what happens to the human body when you are hit by temperatures and fuel at this rate. It burns deep, it burns fast, and it burns very, very hot. I now know too many people that have been injured this way, and we are all banding together. We have a Facebook group. It's called Survivors for Change, Healing with Action. We are determined to bring awareness and public safety into the consciousness of our society. No more are we going to allow any corporations and manufacturers to say that they've chosen to save a couple of pennies of unit cost, meanwhile playing Russian roulette with our lives. So let me be specific on where these risks occur. If you are in your home doing landscaping, touching a lawnmower, if you're refueling it and any fuel or vapor touches the muffler, it can flash back and explode. This causes a burning fireball. The explosion can either explode fuel 
it can throw human bodies over, it can also burn you alive. Weed eaters, chainsaws, same thing. If you are in a high school laboratory, sitting there with a demonstration going on in middle schools, high schools, and college universities. I have too many of those cases documented with people that have been burned, died, and teachers that have been charged criminally. That's not how we're supposed to learn. That's not the education we want our kids to have. This also can happen when we're having students go into a discovery museum for a demonstration. It can happen at a church gathering. It can happen at a food fair. It can happen in so many common places of public gathering. Please listen and think about it. Pay attention. Look through your garage. Pay attention in your shed. Before you let somebody light something with a flammable fuel, know the risk is huge. Any vapor is an invisible wick. So if we have any type of an ignition source that gets into that vapor trail, it can flash back and explode. Here's what I mean. An ignition source would be, of course, a spark. It could be a flame. It could be static electricity. Any of those things can initiate one of these fireballs in a bomb. So common household products, things that look benign, some of these look benign. Some are sold in containers that look more like a gallon of vinegar or even water containers. They're not benign. They have the potential to be a bomb. These are as preventable as they are for me to predict. It is happening far too often. Innocent people are maimed, burned, and killed. I don't say that lightly. I've lived in a burn unit. I've held the hand. I have know the screams, not just of my child, but of other people's. I know what amputations involve. I understand the infection rate. I understand what happens to them socially, emotionally, and psychologically. I had PTSD. It was horrible from having to grab my daughter and pull her to my chest and smother the flames. You can't get it out when it's one of these biofuels. It's miscible with water. It's a polar solvent. That means water doesn't put it out. Stop, drop, and roll doesn't work. You have to deoxygenate it. That's smothering. Please be careful. Please pay attention and please be a part of our initiative. Our website is called notyourturntoburn.com. The bill again, the Portable Fuel Container Safety Act. Our Facebook page, Survivors for Change, Healing with Action. Let us know if this has happened to you or anyone that you know of. We are here to help stop these injuries occurring every single day. And the most succinct way I can tell you, these products are made by the millions. There's a million of these products made every single month without a flame arrester, and that's a defective product. We simply want the safety guard put back on these. All fuel containers used to contain a safety arrester, a flame arrester, a flame retarder. You can call it a flame mitigation device if it lets you charge more, I don't care. Truth of the matter is, it's a simple insert or a piece of screening, and it works effectively every time. It costs anywhere from a nickel to a penny. A nickel to a penny can prevent a lifetime of suffering, maiming, injury, and death. Traumatic, horrific injuries. The human body is not meant to be burned at these temperatures, and what it does, it's indescribable. I don't have a vocabulary. I wanna help burn survivors heal. That's why we're all coming together and we are saying legislation needs to happen and we are going to force this issue. We must insist every fuel container that's portable must have a flame arrestor on it. Thank you. Please be a part of this cause and know this tangible solution is in everyone's best interest.